Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. This is part 3 of chapter networking and internet. Digital literacy. As we all know, literacy is the ability to read and write. Similarly, digital literacy as its name suggests it refers to raising knowledge and awareness about technology such as electronic devices like mobile, laptop, computer, etc. It also includes familiarity with software tools and the internet. Suppose if a person is familiar with the software tools and the internet and he is also aware about the technology such as the electronic devices so he will be called as a digitally literate person in today's world which is full of technology a digitally literate person is very important internet services basically internet services are the services which provide a way for data to be transferred from internet servers to your computer Electronic mail, file transfer, remote login and World Wide Web are some of the internet services which we are going to study today. Email also known as electronic mail. It is the method of exchanging messages between people using electronic devices and it may be a written text with a multimedia attachment. Emails can be sent and received using web-based email application or desktop-based email application. Example of web-based email application are Gmail, Hotmail, Yahoo Mail, etc. and desktop-based application like Microsoft Outlook and Windows Mail, etc. The email protocol which govern the transferring of mail over the internet are SMTP and POP3. SMTP refers to simple mail transfer protocol and POP refers to post office protocol. File transfer. File transfer from one node to another through a TCP based network is done using FTP that is file transfer protocol. We know what is file transfer when we send one file from one node to another in a network. It is known as file transfer. FTP that is file transfer protocol is based on client server architecture. Using FTP clients can download files from server or upload the files to the server. In this example you can see the FTP client is sending the file to the FTP client on another network using the FTP server. Remote Login Telnet It stands for Terminal Network. It is a client server based application that allows the user to access a remote system. A remote system is a system that is situated far away from us. The Telnet enables a user to manage an account or a device remotely. Suppose here you can see in this example here is the Telnet client and the telnet server is remote that is it is away from the telnet client so the telnet protocol will help the telnet client to access the telnet server by asking the username and password of the client for its authentication and after the authentication when the client successfully logins then it can access to the telnet server you can note that telnet server is also known as the remote host. World Wide Web It is commonly known as web. It is an information system where documents and other web resources are identified by URL and are accessible over the internet. It is basically a collection of web pages found on the network of computers. Now, our next topic is Internet Protocol Suite. What is it? It is basically a set 
of communication protocols used in the internet and computer networks what is a protocol protocol is a standard set of rules that allow electronic devices to communicate with each other here as you can see in this definition internet protocol suite is a set of communication protocols means it is a collection of the communication protocols that are used in the internet and computer networks the foundation protocols in the suite are tcp and ip so it is commonly known as tcp ip there are different layers of tcp ip model and they are generally similar to the osi model but are actually different from them they are application layer transport layer network layer and network interface layer or simply the network interface tcp ip tcp ip was developed by arpanet it acts as the model that offers highly reliable and end to end byte stream over an unreliable internet network tcp stands for transmission control protocol and ip stands for internet protocol suppose if we have to connect our computer to the internet then the tcp ip tells us that how we should connect our computer to the internet and how the data will be transmitted between internet and our computer now here you can see in the pic that there are seven layers of the osi model whereas tcp ip model has only four layers so let us understand them one by one in the application layer it attaches a header with the message that is to be sent now when the application layer forwards the message to the transport layer the transport layer checks the information about the source and destination ports at the receiver end and the sender's end tcp and udp are the two end to end protocol that work at transport layer udp is user datagram protocol the transport layer divides the message into a number of fragments known as segments which are again assembled at the receiver end now network layer it is also known as the internet layer as its name suggest it uses the ip that is internet protocol the internet layer adds source and destination machine network address that is ip address so the network layer adds source and destination ip addresses and it uses the internet protocol ip defines the format of packets exchanged over the internet now network interface it is also known as link layer which is responsible for adding the header containing the sender and receiver physical address to the packet received from the internet or the network layer so the message firstly comes from application layer then to transport layer then to network layer and then to network interface that is link layer today hope you enjoyed this video part 4 coming soon till then bye bye